In the previous tutorial, we made the correlation machine and talked about the averaging filter. Here we have another 1D signal or you can see it as a one dimensional image. The empty entries are the placeholders for the padding. And for today, our objective is to check if this 1D image contains a certain portion or a segment or a patch. The patch that we intend to find is of size 3 with the values 3, 7 and 5. However, I have labeled this so-called patch as filter. F here is for filter and we desire to use our correlation machine to search the portion of the image I that best matches with F. Now this should seem strange to you. How can the correlation operator operation that is about multiplying two vectors and then summing the entries of the result can provide a similarity measure? So let's first justify that the correlation operation can indeed give us that measure of similarity. Now here we have two vectors and one standard way of finding the distance between two vectors is to compute the Euclidean distance between them. Assuming you are familiar with the concept of Euclidean distance between vectors, I now expand it and it would look like this. All I have done really is to apply this identity that is a minus b square is equal to a square plus b square minus 2ab. Now we move the summation inside to each term in the expanded equation and you can see that the third term is same as that of our correlation mathematical formulation that we did it in previous tutorial. More important to appreciate is that if this third term is larger then the Euclidean distance will be smaller and a smaller Euclidean distance will imply that the vectors are similar. Hopefully this helps you see why we use correlation as the measure of similarity. As such the word correlation is more apt for matching things or how they are related to each other. That's what correlation the correlation means. Using it for averaging is actually more weird than for matching things. Let's run our correlation machine and see if we can identify the portions or segments in image I that would match our filter F. Here I have created the vector S in which we will store the result of correlation. Let me rewrite the Euclidean distance formula here again and more importantly show that we are only doing the correlation that is the third term the one that is in the box now. Let's warm up our correlation machine. Result for the first entry is 40 and let's slide it over the rest of the vector i. As I mentioned earlier, the bigger value of correlation will imply smaller Euclidean distance. So we look for the highest value in the vector s and the highest value in the vector is 105. And the corresponding segment in the image i is 777. Uh, do you think it's a good match? I'm not so sure by the way. Let's look at the second highest match. The value is 85 and the segment in the image at that location is 384 which is pretty good match to our filter. So this is somewhat okay but I would not call it perfect. Maybe if you use the Euclidean distance, we can get a better match. That is the whole expression and not just the correlation part of it. Let's create another vector to store the results of applying the Euclidean distance and run our correlation machine again. But remember this time we are using the entire Euclidean uh, distance to fill the output vector. Please note that this time the lower value of correlation machine will be a better match. Uh, we have for the filter and the portion in the image. So the lowest number is 2 and it is 384. This used to be our second best location when we were using only the correlation term. And the second best this time gives us the value of 13 and for this the corresponding segment is 077. Now, again not such so ideal. So far we have seen two ways of computing the similarity between the two vectors. The third possible way is to use what is known as normalized correlation. Normalization here means that we want to reduce the impact of magnitude of i and f which helps in achieving the invariance to scaling 
of filter an image. Think of a case when the image may be brighter. It may contain an, an object of interest to us, but the overall brightness may create problems with the matching. The brightness will correspond to some sort of a magnitude here, magnitude of a pixel. Let's create another vector in which we store the outputs of the normalized correlation now and run our machine. Please note that we are storing the normalized correlation outputs this time. And this time we have a score of 0.99, a high score again at the location of 384. But even more interesting place is at the right end of the image I. This time we have matched with 122 2 with a score of 0 0.99, the same, same score as the best matching score. And how is that so? 122 2 does not match 375. So if you are thinking like this, let me tell you that 122, 2, if you scale it by 3, that is if you multiply all the entries by 3, it will give you 366. And if I give you 366, you would say that, yeah, it's a good match to 375. So hopefully you can now see that this normalized correlation based matching is invariant to the scaling. So it was able to match both the 384 as well as the 122 here. So the next question should be why it is able to perform this scaling invariant based matching. The thing is that this correlation operation in linear algebra is called the inner product of two vectors and its notation and another form looks like it. That is, it is a product of magnitudes and the angle between them. When you see two vectors like f and i between these two angle uh, brackets, it means inner product. That's the notation. And it also means, by the way, that uh, this above expression is nothing but the cos theta between them. In simple words, normalized correlation is equivalent to finding the angle between the two vectors. If this angle is small, then the vectors are pointing towards the same or a similar direction. And then we consider the vectors to be similar. Now, another term that is used generally when we talk about finding objects in images is called convolution. So is there a connection to all this here? Let's talk about it then briefly. Uh, here we have a correlation or a cross correlation mathematical formulation. You should be familiar with this by now. And if not, then make sure you check my tutorial called making the correlation machine on my channel. The mathematical formulation for the convolution looks like this. As you can see, it is pretty much identical to the correlation, except that we are flipping the filter before doing the correlation. Also note that uh, we are using star and not the little circle between f and i. In simple words, math is same for two operations, but convolution operation has additional interesting properties in signal processing. Now in modern machine learning, especially in deep learning, they call the neural network that, perf that work on images or for that matter on time series, convolutional neural networks even though the underlying operation is cross correlation. So the term convolutional neural network is a misnomer. The operation they are performing is really correlation. Hope this makes sense and clears up some confusion. This tutorial was also based on the notes by Professor David Jacobs, and you will find the link to his notes in the description and also some more links related to the naming of convolutional neural networks. In the next coming tutorials, I will explain the operations that involve multiple channels and multiple filters in neural networks. Until then, goodbye and thanks for your time. Bye-bye.